I recently got a chance to see how police radar works, and it was a really cool learning experience. Even though this unit is about 10 years old, it uses a KA band microwave or radio wave antenna, and KA band is the most common frequency range used today for police radar. Its range of detection always surprised me. For example, on straightaway stretches of road, this thing could lock onto a car at about half a mile away, which I thought was pretty impressive, especially since most of these tests were on rural country roads. The number on the left side of the unit indicates the target speed or the speed of the cars that were clocking, and the number on the right side of the unit shows our speed. Here I've got the volume turned up so the Doppler shift audio tone can be heard as it clocks a vehicle in the distance. The audio tones that you're hearing are coming from a little speaker that's on the remote control that powers the unit, and these tones change pitch based on the speed of the passing vehicles. These tones are referred to as Doppler shift audio tones. And even though they can be confusing and annoying to listen to, the purpose of using the tones is to help confirm readings and note any interference that might be present. There's also a volume switch and the tones can be muted. Here's a good example of how the Doppler shift audio tones correlate to the speeds of different targets. The pitch becomes higher as the targets accelerate. And here's how it sounds as the targets slow down. I will turn down the volume or mute the audio tones in a lot of the footage for the sake of everyone's sanity. And I'll try to give visual cues with some arrows to help identify when the radar gets a reading and starts clocking a vehicle. But this tone feature is pretty cool because it kind of shows how radar makes use of the Doppler effect. The classic example of the Doppler effect, of course, is how an approaching vehicle or siren seems to change pitch after it passes you. As the vehicle moves towards you, the sound waves get compressed or squeezed together, so their frequency increases and the sound is relatively high in pitch. And then when the vehicle passes you and moves away, the waves are stretched or spread out, so the frequency decreases and the resulting sound is at a lower pitch. And the same thing happens with light waves and other electromagnetic waves such as microwaves or radio waves that the radar gun uses. Microwaves are a subset of radio waves. So the radar gun emits microwaves at a specific frequency. And those waves reflect off of a moving vehicle and return back to the radar unit. But these reflected waves that return have a slightly different frequency because of the movement of the target vehicle. And this change or shift in frequency is what the radar unit uses to calculate the speed of the target. The Doppler effect is used for other applications too, like measuring the movement of celestial bodies out in space. It's also used in medical imaging, spacecraft navigation, satellite tracking, forecasting weather, and a lot of other stuff. So this radar gun is a pretty cool demonstration of our understanding of electromagnetic waves and the electromagnetic spectrum. Curves and hilly terrain limit the clocking distance, but as soon as we have line of sight on the oncoming traffic, we get readings on the radar. Here we are in stationary mode, and this car is a little over a third of a mile away when we get a reading on the radar unit. When the lock button is pressed on the remote control, the displayed speed is stored on the locked window of the radar unit, and the radar continues to calculate speeds. Here are a couple more impressive readings on curvy, mountainous roads. If there's a line of sight to the target, it will lock on and record a speed. Here's a few clips from clocking oncoming traffic on a divided highway. And again, once we clear the hill and establish line of sight, we've got the target locked in. It's the car moving towards us with its lights on up ahead. The little arrows on the faceplate of the radar unit show which mode we are using. And in this case, we are using moving mode opposite direction meaning that we are clocking traffic moving opposite to the way we are moving. 
when both arrows are pointing up, the mode is moving mode same direction. And when there is a line on the right side with two arrows pointing in opposite directions, that is stationary mode. This one is interesting because it shows traffic accelerating from the intersection way up ahead and also traffic slowing down for the traffic light. It would have been nice to have had the audio tones turned on at this point. Here's what the Doppler shift audio tones sound like in moderately heavy oncoming traffic. And finally, here are some shots using the moving mode, same direction mode, where we clock targets moving the same direction in our own lane.